In this video lecture, I will make an introduction to sinusoidal state state analysis in electrical circuits. Okay. So why sinusoidal or like alternating uh, signals are important? Because first of all, uh, from the uh, perspective of our course, of course, uh, AC circuits, alternating current is very critical for electrical systems and in today's technology. So uh, all of the main power lines are powered by AC currents. You can even see uh, AC currents in different kinds of applications, such as like underwater robotic systems and other kind of things. So alternating current is really critical uh, from the electric point of view. But moreover, like this kind of analysis is important for many aspects of engineering and science, such as like waves, motion, nature, mechanical vibrations, rotating mechanical systems. And there are many, many things uh, where we uh, direct or indirect or use sinusoidal steady state analysis concept. Okay, so what's a sinusoidal signal? Of course, a sinusoidal signal can be in the form of a cosine or sine function, such as it has a magnitude and frequency, omega. Okay, omega has the units of radian per second. Okay, sometimes instead of omega, we use f which is hertz, okay? So if we use hertz, the, our signal will be like this, cosine 2 pi f t, right? So it's kind of scale with 2 pi, uh, and depending on the application and the field, you can use rating per second or hertz. They're technically equal just a scale, but sometimes like hertz is more convenient, sometimes rating per second is more convenient. Okay, that's good. Or it's also possible that we can have a linear combination of both, such as like MC cosine omega t or MS sine omega t, which technically can be only combined into a single form, which is a magnitude and F phase difference. Also, we can have a different version, such as MP times cosine omega t plus, let's say, phi 2 or something like that. Okay, so technically the magnitudes will be the same, but only phase difference can be different. Okay, uh, but maybe we can even push the boundaries uh, more from the perspective and as a mathematical perspective, we can even use complex periodic functions, such as e to power j omega t. So it's kind of weird, right? Because it's complex. We are living in a real world. We know that our uh, signals are real, but from the perspective of convenience, like mathematical power and tools, we will technically adopt complex signal rotation. Okay, so we will just kind of push the boundaries of the real numbers, we'll go to the complex set, and you will see that our math will be much easier and convenient. Okay, that's good. So, okay, so what is phase? So a sinusoidal signal, such as sine wave, has a magnitude, which is, of course, which has Vm, as you can see here. So it is positive and negative. It alternates in between them. It has a frequency. Frequency generally, like, it determines the like the scale in terms of the time axis. Okay, so if we increase omega, it will shrink. If we decrease omega, it will expand. Okay, and phase difference. Like if we have a sine wave, which is this is a pure sine wave. If we at the phase, you will shift the signal. What phi amount? It can be degrees or radians, depending on again for the application or the problem. We just shift it towards left. It's technically a non-causal or phase leap like shifting. Uh, if you add a phase lag, it is generally minus five, and in this case, you will shift in this direction. Okay, so technically phi is a simple phase shift with respect to a reference signal. If the sine it is like a shifting with respect to base sine, if it's cosine, it's a shift with respect to a base cosine signal. Okay, that's great. So uh, previously, I told you that we can combine cosine and sines into a single uh, sinusoidal function, such as cosine or sine. Okay, uh, we will technically don't need to use that in the like a uh, couple of lectures when we talk about the phase concept. But it's still uh, good to talk about how we can do it uh, and try to figure out uh, the math, math, simple math behind this. Okay, so we technically what we do is we use the like cosine summation formula. I think if you remember, it is like this. Cosine omega t, cosine phi minus sine omega t, sine phi. Okay, so what take, we will technically do that, we have cosine omega t, sine omega t, cosine omega t, sine omega t. We will just meet the cosine with the cosine, sine with the sine. So in this respect, mc is equal to m sharp times cosine phi. M S is equal to, if we look at that, M times sine 5. Of course, we have negative. 
Okay, so uh, if you compute m, you just take the square of both sides, like this, and sum everything together, you will see that m is equal to square root of mc square plus ms square. Okay, so in other respect, we know that cosine phi is equal to mc divided by m. I already computed m. Sine phi is equal to minus ms divided by m. Okay, so I technically need to compute a tan 2 of uh, sine 5 cosine 5. Okay, so what is a tan 2? a tan 2 is the generalization of the arc tangent to all quadrants because a arc tangent is only available or valid for minus pi to pi in this quadrant, but of course we have a, a general phase uh, angle. It can be anything between uh, 0 to 2 pi, so we technically use a tan 2. A tan 2 function is currently adopted in even the simplest uh, calculators. Uh, you can use computational tools such as like Python, uh, MATLAB, Octave, or any uh, Wolfram Alpha web tools to compute A tan 2. So in general, A tan 2, you don't need to directly compute sine phi and cosine phi. You can simply put the, uh, for example, since m is equal in both sides, since we are just uh, interested in the angle, we can simply write minus ms times and see right okay that's it so let's check if it's correct it should be correct that's great okay so this is the phase this is the magnitude if we combine two cosine one cosine and one sine signal to obtain one cosine signal which is a different magnitude and a phase shift okay that's great that's great so we can do the same thing so instead of cosine signal okay so this is the uh, a tan 2 formula okay so if you want to use the formula Okay, don't use the computational tools. It's still easy. So there are different options depending on the what's x, what's y. Okay, technically, if you are in this quadrant, quadrant you just use the you a tan function. If you are in this quadrant, then I think you will use this one. In this quadrant, you will use this one. If you are on the edge, okay, because when a tan can be undefined, you'd simply use the like uh, indexes such as so if you are here, of course, you have pi over 2. If you are here, you are minus pi over 2. If both x and y is equal to 0, of course, your angle is undefined. Good. Job. OK. So we can do the same thing. And instead of cosine, we can combine everything into a single uh, sine function. It will have the same magnitude, but it will uh, have a slightly different phase, which is, of course, because sine, sine wave and cosine waves are like different from each other with respect to a phase shift. You know that, okay? So it is from this perspective. That's great. Okay, so this is nice. So let's try to now analyze a circuit, dynamic circuit, when input is a sinusoidal function. Okay, so let's assume that we have an RC circuit, which is an OD presentation like this, okay? And input is a cosine signal. So as you remember, we only uh, covered step functions like uh, constant DC input. Now we have an alternating sine zero to input. So what happens? So we know that V of t has two components, right? V h of t plus V particle of t. Okay, so what is V of V h of t? V h of t say it will technically in the form of like this. C, let's say, e to power minus t divided by tau plus V particle of t. Okay, and we, what we do is we generally compute C depending on initial conditions. But in sinusoidal state state analysis, we technically ignore the homogeneous part because if the circuit is passive or it doesn't have to be passive but stable, and we uh, you need to make sure that it should be stable. Okay, as time goes to infinity, homogeneous part because of the expansion components will die. They will technically go to zero, and we are interested in what happens after some time. In terms of these periodic functions, you have a periodic input at the, uh, like source, and you should expect a periodic output at your variables such as capacitive voltage. Okay, so technically, V steady state of T is approximately equal to the particular solution of the differential equation. Okay, that's great. So uh, the only thing that we need to do is computing the particle solution because we already assumed that. Uh, at the time that we are interested about the system, the transients will die. So we don't care the initial conditions. We don't care what happens, like the switching are kind of things. 
So we can find a particle solution, which is very easy. So, okay, since V of ST is a cosine signal, we know that output will be a sinusoidal function, okay, cosine, with the same frequency, it can has a phase shift, or we can have two components like this, D times sine omega t. Okay, so you should remember this from your OD classes, but it doesn't have to be, you don't need to remember exactly, but this is the basic idea. Since we have a sinusoid in, it will be sinusoid out. Magnitude can be different, you can have a phase shift, or you can combination of cosine and sine signal. So what we need to do is, we need to simply compute this. If you remember, RC is the time constant. Let's simplify this. Okay, so let's check it. Let's try to solve it here. And let's clean everything and get some space and try to fit in here. Okay, so V particle of T is assumed to be A times cosine omega T plus B times sine omega t, that's great, let's clean it, and let's try to find a solution. Okay, so what is v? V is, v is just this, okay, a times cosine omega t plus b times sine omega t, okay, so it's like this, we don't need the parentheses here, okay, plus rc is time constant, okay, and we take the derivative. That's great. So what's the derivative of cosine? It's minus sine. So it is equal to minus a times omega sine omega t. That's great. Plus b, what's the derivative of sine? It's cosine b times omega cosine omega t is equal to cosine omega t. So what we will do, we will group the cosines and sines. So let's group the cosines. Okay, we have A, that's good. That's nice. We have plus B omega. That's also great. No, B omega, not B omega. B omega tau. Okay, B omega tau. And minus one. Okay, I'm just bringing here. It's cosine omega t is equal to, from this perspective, it's equal to B Okay, minus a tau omega. This is plus, of course, sine omega t is equal to zero. So if we want to set that equal for all time equal to zero, this should be equal to zero, this should be equal to zero. Okay, so let's check, that's great. So let's try to figure out that. So for the sake of simplicity, so let's assume that omega times tau, which is a very important concept for uh, oscillating circuits, okay? So input frequency multiplied with time constant, okay? Gamma, just for the uh, sake of simplicity, from this perspective, I figure out that B minus A gamma is equal to zero, A plus B gamma is equal to one, I know gamma because it's given, it's omega is given, time is given, I need to solve B and A. It should be here, as you can see, everything is nice. So I computed A and I computed B. <coughs> okay, so I computed the particle solution. And this is actually the steady state form of the output. That's great. So what I can do is, I can use the formula that I previously obtained uh, to pack it in a single cosine signal which look like this, okay? So if we look at the magnitude, you will see that it is equal to one over square root of one plus gamma square, okay? And the phase is equal to minus A10, okay? This is just A10 because I use the formula, gamma, okay? So what is gamma? We know that gamma is positive. Uh, since gamma is positive, uh, your A times gamma is in this direction. The phase is negative, I know that, okay? And it's expected because uh, low pass filter, it should have a lag, it should have a negative phase. Okay, so depending on gamma, phase can be close to zero, it can be close to minus 90 degrees, so it kind of depends on the system to the system. And as you can see at the magnitude, if I increase gamma, I will decrease the magnitude at the output. For example, if gamma is equal to zero, it's equal to one, 
which is equal to state state. Now DC input of the system, like magnitude, if I increase gamma, it goes to infinity, it will technically filter out all of the input. Okay, I will talk about this later, but I'm trying to give you a hint about what we can expect about sinusoidal state state analysis. Okay, so as you can see, it is a little bit messy. Okay, so we put particle solution, we computed the coefficients of cosine and sine, we tried to combine that, and we found the result, and we did this for a simple first order circuit. Okay, now let's play with the system and uh, try to do something that are not very realistic from a physical point of view, but mathematically perfect fine. Okay, so let's assume that instead of cosine omega t, my input is e to the power j omega t. Okay, what's that? So e to the power j omega t is also a complex signal. So it's complex signal, but it's periodic. We know that it's periodic. Moreover, its magnitude is equal to one. Okay, so it's just the magnitude we are talking about. It has this complex part. It has a real part, but its uh, magnitude is equal to one. We know that. Uh, that's nice because it's coming from the earlier identity, uh, and I can talk about this later. Okay, so it's a fictitious signal. Okay, so I'm just replacing cosine with a fictitious periodic input, but that's complex. Okay, and this is a, a great test signal for analyzing linear circuits and linear dynamical systems in general. Okay, so let's try to analyze it. So since this is input, and the, I have an ODE, and ordinary differential equations are perfectly fine in complex domain. Okay, it doesn't have to be real. Of course, the time constant is, uh, in this case, real, but it can be also complex in a different world. But let's just uh, ignore this kind of uh, being real or not case. So what is the format of the particular solution? Okay, uh, it should look like that input, but it will have some sort of degree of freedom. So what we do is, we assume that V particle solution has a magnitude scale, which is possible, um, okay, because we have an input, the output can have a different magnitude, and it should have a phase shift, okay, which is equal to E to the power J omega T plus phase, okay. So we are doing the same thing. Instead of writing this omega T plus phase, we are just writing at the e to the power j term. That's great. So let's try to analyze it from this perspective. It's, it kind of looks crazy, right? Okay, it's crazy, but it's really useful. So it should satisfy your order and differential equation. Okay, this is just exactly the same. Okay, e to the power j omega t plus e to the power j phi. I just uh, technically separated that. Plus tau, okay, derivative of this. So if I take the derivative of this, this should be equal to j omega e to the power j phi e to the power j omega t is equal to e to the power j omega t. So as you can see, I have h to the omega t here, e to the power j omega t here, e to the omega t here, and this equal should hold for all possible of t. So I can just ignore e to the power j omega t from the equation and simplify it a lot. So, okay, of course, there should be some m here. Okay, so from this perspective, if I also remove m times e to the power j phi, I will obtain something like this. 1 plus j gamma, because it is tau times this, is equal to 1, right? It's kind of very simple m times e to the power j phi, which is a complex quantity, is equal to 1 over 1 plus j gamma. Okay, so what is m? m is the magnitude scale that we see at the output when we apply this fictitious input, and phi is the phase shift that we see at the output with respect to this fictitious or test signal. Okay, so magnitude is magnitude, we know that because it's, it doesn't have a phase. So m is simply is equal to 1 over 1 plus gamma square. I will talk about these details later when we talk about uh, review of complex algebra. And if I look at the phase, uh, since it is 1 over a complex number, uh, it is equal to minus, okay, the phase of 1 plus j gamma, okay, and phi is equal to minus 
eight and five. Okay. So as you can see, I've computed a result which was easier in terms of algebraic computations than the previous result. If I look at that, okay, this is my result when I apply this. And if you look at the previous case, okay, you get the same thing. Okay, that's good. Because instead of a cosine signal, if I assume that I'm applying an e to the power j omega t like signal to the system, okay, I observe that I obtain the same magnitude scale and same phase shift. One is real, one is complex, but they get the same result. Of course, I can always uh, stay in the real domain if I'm okay with uh, doing like messy computations, but if you go in a complex domain, which call, we call phase rotation, maybe it will be much easier to analyze these kind of differential equations or uh, dynamic electrical circuit. We technically call this a phase transformation. What we did is we obtained this equation, okay? So we know the input, okay? And we transformed this in a complex algebraic equation. As you can see, this is my new equation, okay? And there is no derivative or integral here. It is complex, so we add some complexity, like uh, going from real numbers to complex numbers. Okay, so it's a like trade-off, but it's algebraic, right? We don't need to take integral, derivative, or do like other kind of things. We just solve for m, we just solve for phi. We know omega because it's the input. We know time constant because we know the system. We compute phase and magnitude, and once you compute magnitude and phase, you can figure out that output is simply V O V C T M times cosine omega t plus phase. Because same phase shift and magnitude that you observe in this phase domain is equal to the uh, real system when we apply uh, cosine, which is a perfect real input. Okay, that's great. Now let's talk about this phasic concept and its notation. So we start with cosine omega t and we pretended it like e to the power j omega t. Of course, it's not equal to e to the power j omega t. Indeed, you can also write cosine in terms of e to the power j omega t plus e to the power minus j omega t divided by 2. So it is an equivalent. But we don't need to do this kind of computations. And then we transform it to 1 because cosine signal is our base fundamental reference signal. It is 1. So if output is cosine omega t, is input cosine omega t, which means that there is no magnitude scale and there is no phase difference. Okay. So if we apply a general sinusoidal signal, which has a magnitude scale and faces with respect to this base signal, we can convert it into in this middle form, which is equal to m e to the power j phi, which is the phase shift plus e to the power j omega t. If we get rid of e to the power j omega t, what we obtain is a purely complex signal, which has a phase and magnitude. This is in polar coordinates, and it has an equal representation, which is like this, which means that it has a magnitude and face, and you will see this a lot in uh, textbooks when talking about AC and other soft electrical circuits. Of course, since it's polar coordinate, maybe for convenient reasons or other kind of uh, reasons, we can also write it in Cartesian coordinates, which is a real part and imaginary part. And it's very easy to convert from polar to uh, Cartesian coordinates using these formulas, such as x is equal to m times cos of phi, m is equal to square root of uh, x square plus y square, or phi, which is the angle where we compute using the angle, or eight and the formula, uh, which is available in even simpler calculators. Okay, so this is the phase notation of signals. So what we do is, let's say we have a signal, okay, V of t, which has the form of m times cosine omega t plus phase. We write it Vj omega, which is the phase transform version of this, is equal to m times e to the power j phi, or let's say it is equal to m phase phi. That's great. Now, let's look at this and try to understand what we can do with that. Okay, that's great. That's okay, that's great. So, that's nice, right? Now the question is, uh, let's try to ignore the uh, results. How we can technically transform the operations such as derivative or integration in phase rotation, which is very easy. Let's assume that we have an input signal, 
V of D, which is equal to n times cosine omega D plus 5. If I take the derivative of these signals, how I can write it in a phasor domain? Or similarly, if I take the integral of it, how I can use the uh, phasor concept to transform it in the domain? Where is it? Okay, we know that if V of T is like this, we can use this middle formula m to the power e to j e to the power g omega t like this. Okay, if we take the derivative, we will obtain this formula. Okay, j omega times this signal. But we know that this already belongs to the middle transformation of v of t. So technically, derivative is very easy. Okay, so if your input signal is v of t and output signal is v of t in the phasor domain, what you look at the, you do is you compute the phasor notation or phasor uh, quantity of v g omega times g omega. So multiplying with derivative of uh, a signal is equal to multiplication with j omega in the phasor domain to compute the phasor transform ver version of this output signal. Similarly, if you take the integral to compute v i of t, okay, so instead of taking the integral of the exact signal, you technically compute this middle signal m e to power j phi times e to power j omega t you obtain such a result which is equal to 1 over j omega times m e to power j phi e to power j omega t if you finalize the phasor transformation you will simply find that v i j omega which is the phasor transform version of the output of the integral is equal to 1 over j omega times v j omega which is the phasor transform version of the input signal. Okay, so it is very nice that it is a derivation and integral, which is pretty like uh, deep concepts and computational hard things to understand and do well in the problems, transforms into simple multiplication in uh, V domain or phasor domain, right? Okay, so if we technically uh, obtain all of the notation, this is technically everything that you need. Cosine omega t is our base signal, and we assume that its phasor counterpart is equal to 1. In a different text, you can see that they assume sine omega t is equal to 1. You can do something else, but this is a more generally accepted notation. Okay. So in this respect, a magnitude scale and added phase shift cosine signal becomes m, which is a magnitude, and phase in the phasor domain. Okay. This is equivalent to this, okay? This is exactly equivalent. It's just uh, the uh, showing the different uh, notation is the same, and it's also possible that we can transform it into Cartesian coordinates. So if we have a signal v of t, and if this signal's phasor domain value is equal to v to the power j omega, no, v of j omega, not v to the power, then derivative is simply multiplication with j omega. That's great. So if we have an integral operation of v of t, in order to compute the, let's say v of, of course this is t, this should be v d of t, v i j omega, which is the phasor uh, transform version of v of t, is equal to 1 over j omega times the phasor transform version of the input signal. Okay, technically these are the everything that you need to use uh, phasor notation or phasor concept to analyze electrical circuits. You don't need anything else, but of course what you need to know is you need to remember your complex algebra. Okay, so complex algebra is not hard, especially if you're using like calculators, computation tools, and in online educator systems, since we are uh, technically allowing you to use like software tools such as Okta, Wolfram Alpha, you don't need to memorize everything. Even they are simple, you can use this kind of computation tools. But it's still nice to learn the basics to get some intuition, at least to understand that if you are doing something wrong or not. Okay, so let's assume that you have a signal Z1, not signal, uh, complex numbers Z1 and Z2, which can be written in Cartesian or polar coordinates. Okay, so we have a summation and difference, which is very similar. Okay, so in Cartesian coordinates, as you can see, uh, summation is very simple. You just uh, add the real parts. You add the imaginary parts, this is your result. Okay, so in summation and subtraction, using Cartesian coordinates is much, much easier. As you can see here, in the difference, what you simply add a minus here, add a minus here, add a minus here, and everything will be the same. Okay, 
If you are using polar coordinates to uh, define your original variables, z1 and z2, what you need to do is you need to first transform them into Cartesian coordinates like this, okay, and then do summation in Cartesian coordinates. You can do that. If you like, you can back, go back to the uh, angular coordinates. That's fine. It depends on the problem. It depends on your, your convenience, okay. Uh, if we go to the multiplication, then uh, the story is different. Uh, in Cartesian coordinates, multiplication is a little bit messier, so you need to figure out the like because like uh, complex times complex is minus uh, because we know that j square is equal to minus one. You should use Nose effect and you should keep track that the real part will become x one, x two minus y one, y two. Similarly, uh, re uh, imagine part will be x one, y two, y one, x two. Okay, so you should. Be familiar with these concepts. You may forget in the details, but you should remember that. The good thing is, if you are using polar coordinates, the multiplication is very easy. You multiply the magnitudes, you add the phases, you're done. It's super easy. So we have also division, which is also easy, but it kind of confuses some of you. Okay, so let's look at the polar coordinates. Very easy. You have a z1 and z2, and you divide z2 with z1. What you do is, you simply uh, divide m1 with m2, okay? So uh, technically, magnitude is very easy. The phase is same, since it's a division, uh, the resultant phase is equal to phase one, phase of z1 minus phase two, okay? So if you go to the Cardinals and coordinates, you should be very careful. So what is this? I will show it to you here. So the idea is x1 plus uh, y1, okay? x1 plus y1j divided by x2 plus y2j. What you do is you multiply both sides with the complex conjugate of the denominator. So this will be equal to x2 plus y2j. So, okay, so it's not like it's complex conjugate. x2 minus y2j. Okay, x2 minus y2 times j. If you just distribute everything, you will see this result. Okay, so again, you should remember these kind of concepts uh, to do well in the like uh, midterms. But again, uh, you can always use calculators or different kind of software called computational tools to verify your solutions. But I really recommend you to remember some of the important stuff from simple complex algebra. Okay, that's great. Now, what we can do is, let's solve a little bit harder problem. Okay, so we have a second order circuit. As you can see, it's an RLC circuit. We already uh, obtained it's an OODE, which is given here. Okay, so it's given that L is equal to 0 0.4 Henry, C is equal to 0 0.1 Farad, and R is 1 Ohm. And in this case, uh, input is cosine omega t. So it is like uh, the input of the system and its alternative current. So what we do is, and we will use the phase concept. So let's first uh, plot the numbers to simplify the differential equation. Okay, so this is equal to i double dot plus, so what is rc? It is 10, that's great, 10 i dot plus what is lc? I think it's 25, let's change color. 25 i is equal to this is a 25 times v nine of that cosine omega t. Okay, so now we are transforming everything in a phasor domain. Okay, that's great. So this is equal to 25. Okay, because it's cosine omega t, it is one. Okay, so this is equal to 25 times i j omega, okay, that's great. This is 10 because we don't know i j omega. It has a magnitude and phase and we will try to figure out later. 10 times j omega times i j omega, that's great. I have double derivative, okay, which is, it means that I have j omega squared times i j omega. So I have i j omega, i j omega, i j omega, if I simplify things, i j omega is equal to 25 divided by, okay, so this is 25 minus j omega square is minus 1, omega square plus 
j times 10 times omega. So this is real, this is complex. Let's check the result, it should be nice. Okay, so we computed ij omega. Okay, so what you can do is, if you know omega, you can just plug omega, uh, find ij omega both in Cartesian polar coordinates. It's uh, up to you. Okay, so uh, technically in the midterms, we will just give you the omega, and you process the result and you will find the result. And well, what's the meaning? Uh, this complex number is technically uh, giving you the magnitude scale with respect to the input and phase shift with respect to the input. Okay, that's great. Now, let's try to figure out the magnitude of this complex signal, okay, uh, without just plugging a, a number to the omega. So what is the magnitude? Magnitude of i j omega is equal to, so magnitude of this, that's great, divided by magnitude of the button. This is equal to square root of 25 minus omega square square plus 100 omega square. So if I simplify things, I will see that this is equal to 25 divided by, okay, I think 25 plus omega square, right? I think we are correct because this is minus 50, it will be 50, that's great. So we computed the omega. So what is the phase? Phase is equal to, so this doesn't have a phase, okay? And uh, this does have a phase, we know that, but it, since it's at the bottom or the numerator, it is equal to minus phase of 25 minus omega square plus 10 omega j. Okay, if you use the 8 and 2 formula, it's equal to minus 8 and 2, okay, uh, first y axis, comma, 25 minus omega square. Okay, let's check it's correct. I think it should be correct. That's right. This is my magnitude and this is my phase. Okay, so let's try to understand uh, what's happening when I'm changing omega. Okay, that's great because I'm changing omega. Uh, as you can see, magnitude starts from one and it goes to zero. We start a constant magnitude and it is equal to one and it's going to zero. So what about the phase? Okay, so in order to understand phase, I really recommend you to draw a, a graphical representation in complex way. Okay, but omega equal to zero, this is equal to zero. We don't have any uh, image in part. It is real and it is something like this. So phase is equal to zero. That's great. So what I do is I increase the image in part, and then I decrease the, uh, I decrease the uh, real part, okay? So my face here is increasing, but since I have my minus, what I do is I move in this direction. Okay, so I move in this direction because of the minus sign. And as omega goes larger and larger, what happens is, this will grow larger because at some point it will have minus degree. I think, and I will uh, talk about this later, I will reach the minus pi or minus 100 degree line. Okay, so I really recommend you to try to do the, uh, intuitive reasoning and comment on these kind of results to better understand about state state and also of electrical circuits. Okay, so now let's just simplify things a little bit. Okay, that's great. And instead of just trying to understand general behavior, let's plug omega to what, zero, one, and infinity and try to get the results. So let's look at the magnitude. What is I zero? I zero is equal to one, right? Because omega is equal to zero. So what is I one? And I the one is a spatial signal. It's equal to 25 divided by uh, this is one, I think this is one, I guess. Omega square, okay, that's, is it one? Okay, it's right, not one. Just plug five. This is a special signal. I'm, I'll correct this in the uh, PDFs, okay? This is equal to five, so two times 25, it's equal to one over two. So maximum is equal to one, and I'm reaching the half of the magnitude. And this frequency is called cutoff 
frequency when you reach the half of your original magnitude. Okay, what is I infinity, which is weird, but it means that when you go very high frequency, this is omega is very large, you will go to zero. You will start from one, okay, at some point you will reach one over two, this is equal to five, and then you will go to zero as uh, time goes to infinity. In general, we analyze this kind of concept in logarithmic scale. Okay, so I don't, uh, we will not go into the details of this uh, in this lecture, uh, but when you look at logarithmic scale, you get the, uh, you understand the system better. But uh, from this perspective, of course, just uh, for, for example, in this problem, we see that as omega increases, as you can see, magnitude of the output decreases. That's great. Okay, nice. So what about the phase? Phase of i j zero. Okay, we know that this is zero. It is zero. It's zero degrees or zero radians. It's up to you. Okay, so we start here. So what about phase of j? Again, we should plug five, which is better. Okay. That's nice. So let's look at this. I think looking at this is a bit better. So when this is five, this is like 50. It doesn't matter. It has an imaginary value. But as you can see, this will be zero. So it will be a purely complex. The inside of the phase part will be here, okay, because of like it's positive, but we have minus. So phase should be at minus 90 degrees. It's equal to minus 90 degrees. Okay, when we go to infinity, now let's try to understand that. Okay, so as you can see, this is going to infinity, this is going to minus infinity, but this is going to minus infinity much faster because it's omega square. So this part will dominate the behavior. So uh, technically, when we go to infinity in frequency, your uh, signal will be technically at 180 degrees. So it's only minus some plus 190, which, does, which doesn't matter because of the uh, value of the omega square. So i times j infinity will be equal to minus 180 degrees, or you can simply say that it is uh, plus 180 degrees. This doesn't matter from the perspective of this problem. So. Uh, as you can see, the magnitude starts from 1 goes to 0, phase starts from 0 to goes to minus 108 degrees. Okay, so this is, was a uh, nice problem, and we covered everything uh, from the perspective of, like, omega. Uh, we look at the, like, the phasor domain uh, counterpart of the derivative. We technically covered the basics and important concept of the course. Again, uh, sorry for that, this should be equal to 5, and everything is fine. Okay, so uh, in the next video lecture, I will start talking about the concept of impedance.